Hello everybody, you have tuned in to Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover virtually any aspect of Making a Murderer. I go over the evidence, the documents, the photos. So if you'd like, stay tuned and in the future I'll have many more videos besides the one you're about to see. Hello folks, how you doing today? Today we're having uh, another MAM talk. Uh, with another supporter of Stephen and Brennan, and, and uh, this pro supporter goes by the name of Rebecca Jo Snodgrass. She's been um, a very strong supporter of the guys since pretty much the word go. Um, she's um, come up with some ideas that were actually very thoughtful, particularly one we talk about in this video, with which is the quick trip uh, gas cards and stuff, which help you know Dolores and them, and, and, and also Barb to be able to go visit um steven and brendan and stuff and you know and with all they've been through it's i think something that just kind of maybe helps ease the burden um for them a little bit knowing you know they're having to endure quite a bit you know on their own so some little bit of gas and, and stuff like that i think is not really um a huge deal um so if you feel inclined to want to help you know them you know and everything i will have the link down below uh, to where you can go and do that and donate to get them some gas cards or whatnot if you like. So, as I said, we're going to be talking with Rebecca, Rebecca Jo Snodgrass. We talk about, like I said, the quick trip stuff. We talk about Brendan. We talk about, you know, special care. We talk about uh, the bones, uh, cadaver dog Brutus. Uh, so, some things, you know, we talk, we kind of go through some of the case a little bit. So, without further ado, we'll get right to it. Who I am, though, right? I mean, <laughs> yes, I know. I've never really Hello, this is Rebecca to Joe Snodgrass, everybody. We're here to talk today a little bit. Um, part of my little tour, I guess, running the rounds of all the MAM supporters who are willing to be seen on video and uh, and talk about the case. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. <laughs> so there's some few things to talk about, really, I mean, that we could talk about. There's the interesting aspect that there's a lot of talk that there's going to be some interesting developments in the case this month. Now, obviously, on Brendan's side, yes, we're going to see a brief from the state and then amicus briefs or not, possibly, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see who who weighs in in support of the state against Brendan Dassey. That ought to be interesting. But yeah. obviously, there'll be those things. So but there's also seems to be hints that. Zellner is going to have something maybe flying this month, which I think is interesting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, certainly Sandra Greenman's out there hinting away at it. She can't really say anything <laughs> apparently, but she's she's yeah. hinting away. Um, yeah. But also, I saw um, seven pairs of panties on um, Twitter was also saying the same thing that this month is is for some reason going to be some some big stuff. I guess that happens. So I'm in intrigued. To find out what that's going to be for certain mm -hmm. um so yeah um so seeing as we're here to talk to you and, and and talk to supporters uh why don't we give you a chance to talk about something you were looking to talk about what a burning issue for you <laughs> i don't really have any burning issues um or at least what? ones that you or at least ones that you're you know particularly uh passionate about at the moment or concerned about <laughs> oh, um, I think one thing that I, if people, if they're not in the groups that much, but they watch your videos, I know I watch your videos a lot. Um, if you don't know about the quick trip gas cards to the, to the families of Brendan Dassey and Stephen, uh, Stephen Avery, this really has helped the families better afford being able to get out and visit their son. So, yeah. and there is a link you just, it's just www.quicktrip.com. Okay. The addresses of the families are all in the pinned posts, but you can also PM me, and I've got all their addresses too if you need it. Okay. And it, it benefits Barb, it ben benefits um, Dolores, and it benefits Pete. Right. And, and I know they really appreciate that. Yeah, and I, you know, I really support that this particular type of support for the family. I mean, it gives them the ability to to be able to pay for gas for things like going to see Brendan and Stephen. Um, and, and to be quite honest, it's just gas cards. You know, they've had to endure a lot to, mm -hmm. to, well, Steven pretty much since he was 20 years old 
has you know been imprisoned and we can we can say for certain 18 years of it was um you know wrongfully uh but you know we're getting to the point where we're going to be able to see the other half of that was wrongful as well most likely here coming soon um but the thing is they've had to endure a lot and brennan's certainly innocent and and you know the fact that we give them a little bit of help with some gas cards even if some of them don't get used to go see Brendan and Steven, I don't care. Yeah. They deserve it. They deserve yeah. a little bit of a break, you know, after Any everything kind of they help. have to endure because of, you know, what's happened in this case. So, so I'm not begrudging them anything. I think if anybody's inclined, you know, you should help them out and get them some gas cards, help them get, you know, up to see Steven and Brendan so that it's less of a burden on them. I think that that's a very, very good thing. And, and it doesn't have to be just gas cards. You can get anything quick trip cards. So they can even eat on the road if they have to. Because it wasn't a long drive for Barb until Brendan was moved. And right. then that's when I got the idea of the quick trip gas cards when they moved Brendan farther away. And I thought, they're going to need new tires here and there or oil changes, things like that. A drink, food, you know. Sure. Yeah. So. I mean, it's not like I said, it's not like it's not like we're... It's not like it's just cash and they're going to go out and buy a million dollar home, folks. It's just quick trip <laughs> cards. So yeah. if it helps ease their burdens a little bit, I think it's worth it. You might yeah. consider it. I'll leave their, her link to the quick trip links down in the info below the video for everybody to go check that out and see if you want to help them out with some gas cards or whatever you know it might be. Um, so you can do that on your own if you like. So um, Now, there was something else interesting lately. I don't know if you saw it there was a, a Reddit post and it was talking about the cadaver dogs. It was talking about, well, basically it was talking mo a lot about the animals involved in the case, but it was in, in particular, it was focusing on cadaver dog bruises. Now you've watched enough of my videos. You probably know the issues that I have with the bones that most people have with the bones. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, this one, I, this, this was a little tiny little aspect that I hadn't considered before. And I was just going, Wow. You know, so here's here it goes, basically, is what it was. They talk about how Cadaver Dog Brutus was, like, a very, very highly trained dog. He was he was um, what they call, like, uh, very active in the sense that he was, he was, uh, he was like, the top in, in his, you know, for of all the dogs that are able to, like, s smell decomposing, um, you know, flesh matter. Um, he is, like, the top one. So... The interesting thing they point out is that the moment they bring him to the salvage yard, they they bring him over by the crusher, the car crusher. He immediately smells the blood in the RAV4 decaying and immediately starts walking towards the RAV4. That's how good his senses are, that he was smelling the, the tiny bit of blood in the RAV4 that was decomposing. Okay, that's how good this dog is, right? Okay. So then they're talking about how on, you know, the 5th, that they had Brutus up over by where the fire pit kind of is and stuff. Brutus never alerted. Not at, not even the slightest. He alerted at places on Cuss Road. He alerted at, I mean, various places that were not actually on the Avery property. But he didn't, on the 5th, when he was over by the fire pit, didn't alert. Hmm. Now, if Teresa's bones are in that fire pit, mm -hmm. they're in that fire pit on the 5th. If, did they take? Did they mention if they took the cadaver dogs to Stephen's garage or house? Uh, or? This this particular post didn't. But the, the the what's what's the takeaway here is, is that those bones were found on the eighth. And what's the excuse, right? What's the excuse for why it took so long to find those bones? Oh yes, yes, it's big bad bear, big bad <laughs> bear the dog. I, I, <laughs> that poor I, that dog. dog. I swear that dog. Is has a, a, a magic power. It can absolutely paralyze investigators and 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 grown men and investigators. Can, I mean, that dog has the power to paralyze them completely. It's amazing. Um, it's the power of Stephen Avery, the magic bullet, the magic bleach. I mean, hell, magic <laughs> yeah, bear. His dog has magic powers. You know, it's like, geez. Um, you know, but seriously, it's like so they're trying to use this. You know, this dog, and I swear, if Stephen Avery, the, if the Stephen Avery case or whatever was ever made into like a trading card game, the, 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 the bear card would immediately like, um, paralyze <laughs> all law enforcement, yeah. uh, characters in the game or something like that. I swear. Anyway, um, 
<laughs> but so Cadaver Dog Brutus does not hit on those bones on the fifth. And they and people are then want to say, oh, it's because of Bear. I'm sorry. He clearly hit on a few drops of blood in the RAV4 from the Crusher, which is not exactly close to each other. And you're telling me that he couldn't smell decomposing bones and stuff like that in a, in a fire pit when he was close to it on the 5th? Yeah, doesn't really. Wash. I, no. Doesn't wash. <laughs> so, none of it that's washed. interesting. None of it washed. They can't connect any of the dots because none of them can connect. It's all crooked from the get-go. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's such a mess. It's yeah. You look at the the, narr- the narrative for the Stephen Avery case. You look at the narrative that they drew out of Brendan. Both of them are just a mess. There's, they're just a mess of things that don't match or work together or, you know, that just, you know, anyway, it's, yeah. it's certainly a fishy and not, and not really, it doesn't, like I say, a lot of it just doesn't wash. It doesn't make sense. It, it's quite the scrambled egg and it's going to be a long time before they can unscramble it. They need the lawyers that they have in, in, uh, Drizzen and Knight Rider and Zellner. They need those lawyers. Um, so yeah, anyways, I thought that's particularly interesting. The, the Reddit had some more things in it that I was going to go back and read, but that really was for me the big one because, you know, it's, it's obvious that those bones weren't there on the fifth with that, that could information be a weird- and telling me bear, it's bear again, bear, you know, give me a break. If you Lay could, off of bear. Yeah, that's old right. news. If, I mean, if, let, if, let it go. if Brutus could smell a few drops of blood in the RAV4, uh, 100, 200 yards away in the RAV4. And he's certainly, if he's anywhere near the garage or the fire pit, he's going to detect it. He doesn't have to walk within the distance yeah. of Bear, but he's going to detect it, and he'll alert. You know. Hopefully Zelda will grab on Brutus as a witness, because that can be used to corroborate their story, that there nothing nothing happened there. Brutus oh, actually can that. be a witness. Yeah. I, would, I would actually love that. Cadaver Dog yeah. Brutus to be like one of the main, the main <laughs> like, yeah. witnesses that helps overturn this. That would be sweet. <laughs> that would be so sweet um, I'm actually looking to make a new addition to my video um, that I'm going to do next because I want to talk about this subject that I'm actually talking about with you right now um, I got this little puppy that I that somebody I know got recently and this guy is just he, he's just got a lot of personality he's really funny so I'm going to use him kind of in my upcoming videos especially in this one where I'm going to be talking about the dogs um like whenever there's something like weird or something wonky, you know, I'm going to cut to him, you know, making like noises like, you know, like, you know, weird, you know, so that that it's kind of funny or whatever. But so, but that's what, that's what's this information about cadaver dog Brutus kind of now has inspired me to think of other ways to make it fun and, and also make it educational. So, but, um, so yeah, there's, did you get a chance, did you get a chance to see Paul? I think it was Paul who posted it in group today. Um, I can't remember the name of the lawyers, but several legal people, lawyers and so forth, are speaking out about the coercion of Brendan Dassey and such. Have you had a chance to see that? There's, well, yeah, there's um, one of the amicus briefs filed for Brendan was a brief oh. filed by former prosecutors and law enforcement officers and stuff like that. But I have also, I also saw something that Stephen Drizzen had posted recently where he was talking like basically now even more people are starting to just jump on the Brendan bandwagon essentially it's mm-hmm. it's you know his he's it's really starting to catch momentum um which it should i mean i i swear i mean if you look at that confession and you look at that confession and go uh, it's good all right i'm i'm cool with it you're a jerk and a moron um, yeah you're an i mean it's just there's nothing about that confession that is natural there's nothing about it that flows. There's nothing no. about it that seems honest. Uh, there's no, I mean, just nothing about it. Nothing about that 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 whole scenario, ref, like, um, you know, gives me um, reason to b- believe the state or trust the state or anything. No. The way that they conduct themselves in this investigation makes me just go, "What else are you doing that I can't see? What else is behind the curtain?" Because that's 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 the what seems obvious to me. What is it that we can all see? Because we're just ordinary citizens out here without the access to the to the you know office rooms and conference rooms and stuff where you know 
the real conspiracy with this was taking place, you know? So. In regards to the conspiracy, the corruption has to go pretty deep because I cannot, I'm not a legal person, but I'm intelligent enough to know that you cannot lock up somebody on a confession that does not have any corroborating evidence. Right. No DNA of any kind that Brendan Dassey was ever there. He was a child. He was an innocent. He was naive. He had nothing to do with it. He was completely and totally manipulated. Yep. I don't understand how he could be locked away with no corroborating evidence to right. his confession. Yep. It makes no sense. That's And that's what former prosecutor Robert Milan, those are his exact sentiments on it. He's like, when I look at this confession, he goes, when I look at any confession, he, he says, if uh, have you watched um, um, True Story of a False Confession, the story of Brendan Dassey? Uh, yep, yep. I love that one, right? In there, he starts out and he goes, he goes with Brendan's confession. Well, with any confession, the first thing I look at as a prosecutor is, is, is there anything to corroborate it? Because with, without without corroboration, uh, 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 um, a confession is meaningless. And then he goes, I'll say it again. Without corroboration, a, def a confession is meaningless. He says it twice. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. That's Robert Milan, a former prosecutor from the state of Illinois, actually, Cook County, one of the most mm -hmm. notorious uh, mm -hmm. counties, you know, but he, he's from there and he's, he was a big part of getting that place cleaned up or moving it in the direction. That of, direction. Of, yeah. Yeah. In the direction of, cause now he's got, now he's installed what he calls these um, in um, conviction integrity units. Uh, he calls them CIUs. And what it is, is they periodically look back at old cases and go, okay, look, what, what was the evidence like here? What are we finding out in new? Uh, and they're going over things. And if they're seeing problems, they're actually trying to catch their own mistakes and, and, and write them sooner rather than later, which is, you know, yeah. awesome thing. <laughs> but that's why we love Robert Milan so much because he's a prosecutor that has ethics. He's a prosecutor that we all want to think is is in our town who's who's hard as nails on the bad guys but when it comes to the you know questionable stuff of shaky confessions like with brendan and uh things like that then he knows that seeking a conviction there for its own sake is not the right thing to do which is the ethical kind of thing we really really want to see from our prosecutors and that's everywhere but what we're mostly seeing are these prosecutors who measure their worth by the number of convictions that they are able to get that's how they measure their own self-worth essentially and you know as long as we have that we have a problem because justice yeah. is going to get sidestepped oh yeah that's not just because at all. glory is being sought mm -hmm. you know? so yeah it makes me sick. It makes yeah. me sick. How many people? I mean, and, and I didn't know that people would willingly, wrongfully convict somebody just so they could win. I mean, it just, it's inconceivable to me that somebody would do that. Right. Absolutely. I mean, it's another reason. I mean, right now we need SCOTUS to step up and thump the lower courts. We really do. We need them to thump the lower courts and go, look, bozos. When we said special care, we meant special care. We weren't just mm -hmm. talking to hear ourselves talk, idiots. You know, that's what we kind of need. We need them to snap the lower courts back into line uh, when it comes to juvenile confessions because this is ridiculous. Um, yeah. Like I was telling Lisa, that disturbing, disturbing, disturbing fact that came from the Innocence Project's uh, amicus brief for Brendan where they talked about in the stats of all the people that have been exonerated since uh, whatever DNA was coming out, which was like 96, right? And the Innocence Project sprung up and they started keeping track of these, you know, wrongful convictions and actually keeping the the, the stats and the numbers. There's actually an organization now that does it. It's a disturbing thing. Eight out of ten when it came to juveniles with mental limitations. Eight out of ten gave false confessions. Eight out of ten. That means only two managed to refrain from giving a false keep confession it together. yeah right eight um, of them did <laughs> so that, that's, that's a disturbing to, a very disturbing number and it's widely due to the read technique i, I don't think a, a child or a special needs even a special needs adult should be allowed to be questioned without a god dang lawyer there a lawyer that's in his side in his corner right 
And it's the just... Supreme Court has demanded, and this is in a lot of the briefs, I, I'm getting kind of brushed up on the law here, but the Supreme Court has said before that, that, that they need to, they need to uh, address that, basically. It's, you know, they, they were bringing up the fact that the Supreme Court has said in the past, you can't use the full-blown read, read technique on a juvenile. Mm-hmm. It, it, I mean, and th- it, there's countless t- there's a bunch of times where the Supreme Court has said this in cases, not just one or two, right? It's the, the these um, the pr- law professors showed like about five or six different times where the court has said this, but it has said if you if you attempt to use the full read technique on a juvenile, you are taking a risk, a huge risk. That you're going to get a false confession. You, by their nature, these juveniles are are just more susceptible to give a false confession. It's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, and that's what it. And that's the way it is. So if you decide to go, if you decide to ignore us on this, you are taking the risk of 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 attaining a false confession, and that and that obviously should you know re- lay on your head. You know? Yeah, and, and so, no one can tell me, nobody can tell me that Wiegert and Fassbender didn't know what the hell they were doing. Oh, yeah, they knew exactly what they were doing with that kid. That's why they kept Farb out of that room. It did, they didn't just give her the option. They they coerced her, too. They manipulated her, too, and kept her out of the room. And yeah. they knew exactly what the hell they were doing with that boy. Yep. It makes me angry to this day. It makes me angry. It does. And, and, and I listen to, like, people that believe that Stephen and Brendan are guilty. And I listen to them say, you know, things like, oh, well, Tom Fassbender didn't know th- what his mental state was. <laughs> are you okay. kidding? I mean, I'm like, are, are we in bizarro world here? The guy's yeah. an investigator, okay? The guy's job is to size people up in moments because that's his job. That's what he has to do. He has to size people. Is this guy, is this guy playing with a full deck? Is this guy crazy? Is he, is he just uh eccentric is is he dangerous all these things all these questions a hundred different questions have to go through a detective's mind when they're approaching somebody they don't know because they have to size that person up and you're telling me after an entire weekend with brendan which most of the tapes we don't have folks of that weekend they're just not there because apparently the videotape didn't work over at the fox hills resort so but after an entire freaking weekend, these guys had no inkling of how susceptible Brendan yeah, was right. to suggestion. Yes, yeah, totally. Because yeah. Kenny is, <laughs> my son Kenny is handicapped and he's, you know, uh, he's autistic, but he's high function autistic. But you can tell with how he talks, with how he moves, with how he acts. You can tell a special needs person when you see it. You don't right. have to have a telltale sign across their forehead that lets you and know. And they certainly knew after an entire weekend. I mean, they were with him on Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, Same. and then did this whole thing on Monday. So you're telling yeah. me in four days, these two detectives couldn't figure <laughs> out that he had some susceptibility to Yeah, suggestion? they're lying. They're lying. They just wanted oh, to ridiculous. say it. They wanted to cover their own ass. And yeah. anybody that suggests it as plausible to explain why Fassbender and Uyghur didn't realize is laughable. It's ridiculous. And, and let's just say for the sake of argument, okay, they didn't realize. That does not change the fact that they still coerced an innocent child without any legal... Re- I don't care if it's not illegal in this state. It should be illegal in every freaking state in this country to question a child, whether they're special or not, without a parent or legal rep present. The lawyers they have now are not just there for the paycheck. They are uh, there because they not. care. I well, can tell, and they're going to win. It's going to take time. State's going to come back fighting like a bitch. But I'm telling you, Drizzen and I, Ryder and Zone are going to kick it. Yeah. And Drizzen's like out there on Twitter saying things like, you know, who's going to be the next Laura and I, Ryder? You know, I can't wait to see who's going to step up and become the next Laura and I, Ryder. You know, basically talking about doing pro, pro bono cases and, and, and really trying to do good for the world and stuff like that. So, I mean... I, I really like I like Drizzen a whole lot because that's what he's trying to do. He's not just trying to be a lawyer and do and do what he does. He's trying to cultivate. Uh, yeah, a, a, make you know, a change. Uh, yeah, a, yeah, he's cultivating like a group of people that will get together and really attack wrongful convictions, especially with youth. Um, it's highly commendable. And, yeah, it is. And yeah, so I respect Steve Drizzen a lot for that. He's got the vision. 
and he's got the charisma to do it. He's, you know, he's just, he's likable. He's, there's just, you know, and I, even though it's a lot of responsibility for him to take on really to try to be the guy cultivating all this talent and trying to help encourage talent and everything. It's a lot of work and all that, but, but I imagine the payoff is, is pretty huge too. I mean, I mean, he, he probably feels about to burst every time he sees Laura Nyrider out there kicking butt. I mean, he probably is, you know, always about to burst with pride when he sees that. So that's got to be a big payoff. And the so. payoff doesn't come in monetary form for these people. These people have hearts. They care about their clients. Brendan and Stephen are not just another number to these lawyers. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. And you can see that in Brendan in the in the recent pictures as compared to when Man first came out. Mm-hmm. The boy, Stephen and Brendan didn't look happy in their photos. They had a smile, but it wasn't real. Now right. there's a real smile behind their smile, and yeah. I, it brings joy to me to see that hope they're has happy. Re- they hope has returned. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, they know they got a lot of people out here. You know, yeah. working working for them and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I, I heard I heard the other day that um, my friend Paul had written a letter to Brendan, and apparently Brendan had received it. And I guess Paul was talking about uh, him and I doing videos to try to create awareness for Brendan and stuff, and. And so I guess Brendan was talking to somebody on the phone and asked and asked that person to pass along the message to me uh, that Brendan said thank you and and everything and I was like oh I don't know as I don't do this for anything I do this because I care so much but when when I heard that I was like oh. I immediately got out and typed that's the best reward of all you know <laughs> and 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 because it is and because um, I'm certainly not making. Just for anybody that might be wondering, I'm certainly not making any money on what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> I'm certainly have spent quite a bit of money on a computer for a studio, cameras, microphones, um, building this current studio that I'm in. Um, you know, so I'm 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 certainly in the red uh, on this. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you do something you love, you don't do it for <laughs> exactly. I'm doing it. Be- I'm doing it for reasons other than money. So. <laughs> Which is the way to be because I think yeah. it helps, honestly, because it keeps me honest, keeps me sincere. And, you know, and then I just rely on my passion about it all to, to carry me through, you know, so that I don't get mundane <laughs> or repetitive. <laughs> I, do miss, I do miss getting the letters from the guys and I miss being able to write them, but it's okay. I've learned with the past year how to deal with that because I was very depressed over that. But... I've learned to deal with it. I don't want to put my husband's job in jeopardy. I don't want to put the boys in any jeopardy. And it's nice when I see other people getting letters. I know they're writing, they're being written to. Mm-hmm. Stephen and Brendan are happy. That's all that matters. Yeah, absolutely. They, look, they always look good in the pictures, you know, what we see there on Facebook and stuff. So uh, I'm always happy to see that. And I know, uh, I know they take Brendan little treats when they go see him and stuff. Sometimes yeah. they're able to take like, uh, they're able to take him like a little, uh, those pizzas that are actually like folded into like a pocket or whatever they call those things. Like they're able to sometimes take one of those into them and stuff like that. I guess. Yeah. And, and all of his letters that he wrote me, he always, he always, he always had a lot of food. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of junk food or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that's, that's what I want to see is Brendan get out. And the first, I, I mean, I just want to see him, you know, get out and immediately they take him to like the nearest, like, you know, cool pizza parlor or the yeah. nearest, like, cool burger place you know and everything where he'd just see him tearing into like a burger or, or tearing into some pizza um, yeah. you know that's what i would really love to see but oh yeah so waiting for that day yeah <laughs> so well unless we have anything else i think we've covered a lot today yeah to... i mean i think that if if the guys get out though it's not going to i mean not if when the guys get out, that is not going to be the end for them. That's what really worries me because no matter how much facts, stone cold facts we bring to people, they're not going to change their mind. People are not so ready Some and willing people, to change right. their minds. Certain people in the area, locals are going to yeah, be hard and hard to change, slow to change. No. Uh, certainly. And they may never. And that, I, I worry about their safety. I worry about their security in life, getting a job, moving on. I, I want I, them to be left alone. I personally think they should house. both move out of Wisconsin. That's uh, too far from me. <laughs> I know. But I personally think no. they should. Or at least yeah. they should move from the western edge to the eastern edge. Something. 
Um, yeah. You know, because I, a new life. in that area, they're never going to get a fair shake. That's what the yeah. that's what Manitowoc and 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 and, and Peg Lottenschlager with her BS oh. uh, right signing off that there was nothing wrong with with the wrongful conviction. You know, of Stephen Avery in '85 and all everything that goes down there. I mean, they they. They have no friend in Wisconsin, and they certainly have no friend um, there in Manitowoc, Calumet, you know, whatever, that yeah. western area of Wisconsin. And they really need to get out of there, and I hope they do. I truly do. And it's unfortunate that they would have to be run out of their home, but if you want to have a, you're not going to change anyone's mind. Mm -hmm. The people that are already dead set convinced that they're guilty, you are never going to change their stupid, empty, shallow little mind. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately, they have to relocate. Yeah. If they want to be happy, you know. That's what I think they should do. That's, I mean, it's the easiest way because you, it's, you know, to expect thousands of people to change is just not realistic. Oh, so, yeah. no. If that, if that were to happen, we wouldn't have had wars and crap right. like that. Exactly. Oh. But if they go somewhere nicer, but, you know, obviously that also depends on getting their settlements so that they'll have money to go yeah. do what they need, you know, to get away and go somewhere else, you know, and That'll that's be what litigation. Stephen was doing before and they, and, and they yeah. got him again before he could get to it, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I hope they do, but I, I don't think Stephen will. I think Stephen plans to just dig right back in and yeah. so Next, Stephen, right. you get right. yourself wrongfully convicted a third time, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> I mean, it's hard enough to believe that somebody could be wrongfully convicted twice. You know, you only see them in the Twilight Zone. Right. But three times, you'd be like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But still, if he does, he's on his own. <laughs> no, he really should get out of that area. I hope a lot of people are going to be attending the rally. I'm trying. I can get a ride there, but... I have to work, and my kids work with me, so I can't be there for eight days. I, I just can't. So if I can't get a ride back, I can't go to the rally. Uh, but I hope a lot of people know that there is one in Manitowoc, yeah. and it's going to be a, a big one, a good one, hopefully, if you can make it out there. I'm, I, yeah, I'm getting tickets tomorrow, I think. So. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to be going. That's awesome. I, I know that Steven's going to be calling. I wonder if Brendan will call, too. To call at the rally? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I never went to one before, so... <laughs> oh, they're fun. They're fun. They're a lot of work. I've hosted a couple. They're a lot of work, but they're worth it. They're mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. All right. Well, I def we'll definitely see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go stay at the same place Mark Hodna is staying. You know, safety in numbers. <laughs> I'm thinking about I'm thinking about I'm thinking about having this as my disguise. <laughs> Glavin. Uh, no, anyway. <laughs> I just mess up my hair. <laughs> All right, Rebecca. Well, I think we had a lovely talk today. We'll have to maybe do it again sometime. We have sure. some more stuff to talk about. And uh Obviously, I'll be talking to, I believe the next person I'm talking to is going to be from Denmark. This is Georgina Stulen Boss, Bose, however you, speak, however you say that. Um, and um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And I look forward to talking to you again in the future. All righty. Hopefully, we'll see you at the rally, okay? I plan to be there. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. So that's going to wrap it up for the MAM talk for today, folks. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you.